Hi friends, welcome to P Karika Maths. I'm Kavita and today we will solve a question of TIFR 2020. So it's an abstract algebra question, but you need a little bit knowledge of linear algebra as well. So let's read it first and then conceptually understand it. Okay. Consider R cube as a space of three cross one real matrices. That means R cube, the space is a collection of vectors where X size belonging to real numbers. The multiplicative group GL3R, this is a general linear group, this is a collection of all 3 cross 3 matrices over R and determinant of A is non-zero. That means all these matrices are invertible. So the question says the multiplicative group GL3R of this um, real matrices acting on the space that means acting on r cube by left multiplication so basically they are they are defining a group action so if i say gl g is your gl 3r s is your r cube then they define group action by a if a belongs to g and x belongs to s this is just left multiplication by a so this is matrix, matrix multiplication. This is a 3 cross 3 matrix and this is a 3 cross 1 matrix. So this is a well-defined map and it's easy to check that this is a group action. Okay. Now what they are saying, what is the number of orbits for this action? First recall the definition of an orbit for, for any x belonging to s, we define orbit as ax such that a belongs to g where a runs over all the elements of uh, group gl3r okay if i say x is equal to zero this is a zero vector then orbit of x will be what so this will you will easily see that this will be a zero vector again if I say x is a non-zero vector, then what will be your orbit? So for this, I claim that this orbit for a non-zero vector x will be the whole space R except zero vector. So for uh, this claim, we need a little bit of linear algebra. Uh, we will see some result from linear algebra, then we will prove it easily okay so firstly think an invertible matrix a as a linear transformation an invert even an invertible linear transformation from r3 to r3 okay and uh, uh, we have a result which we will use here a linear transformation t from any vector space v to v this invertible if and only if it sends a basis for V to an another basis of v, another basis of V. Okay, so for any XY belongs to S, we can always find an invertible matrix A which map X to Y. Okay, how come? So, if I say P1 and P2 are two bases of R3, okay, where X belongs to P1, means X is a member of uh, basis B1 and Y is a member of basis B2, right? And uh, that means uh, there are two more elements in the set and B2 will be your another basis. So, we can define T, linear transformation T from R3 to R3 by this map. So, it will take X, it will take X to Y and another two elements will map to the rest of the elements of the another uh, basis. Okay, so it's, uh, so basically you can see that it's an invertible matrix by this result. So, the corresponding matrix with respect to this basis will be an invertible matrix 
which takes x to y. So we can say that for any so for any non-zero vector orbit of this x will be whole r cube except zero. So what we got? What we got? So there are only two orbits. Two orbits. One is corresponding to a zero vector and another one is corresponding to a non-zero vector. I hope you like this video.